Hi guys, this is Vision Base and this is the first video of our Heartstyle Signature Kick tutorial series. In this series, we try to take signature kicks from top Heartstyle artists and recreate it in Ableton Live. For today's video, we have Vertai. And I am taking inspiration from two of his tracks called Together We Grow and Not My Affection. Before we start the video, I have a quick announcement to make. Two of my Heartstyle sample packs Heartstyle Sample Pack Volume 1 and 2 are now free forever. You can visit my store on Gumroad and download from there. Another quick announcement, this project file will be available for download after we cross 1000 subscribers. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. You can comment so that the algorithm picks the video and ranks it higher. Alright guys, this is the final product that we have here. Sounds nasty, right? Let me walk you through the whole process. So I started off with this normal kick that I created in Kick2 a few months back and this sounds like this. Our first effect is FabFilter Pro Q3 and as you can see here, I have automated a certain peak in the plugin. So let's see what it does. So as you can see, this, this point is actually moving from around 668 hertz to 2000 hertz. So what I noticed while I was trying to recreate his kicks is he tries to fill this region. 300 hertz to 1500 hertz to make the punch sound fuller and you just don't have to stop there you can actually go forward and automate uh, a certain peak in the frequency range and that's how you can make the sliding pitch effect in the punch like how a dial does so now let's add isotope trash 2 Let's hear how it sounds like. Uh, sounds quite distorted, a lot distorted. So what I have done here is, uh, I didn't took any distortion model from here. I simply went and turned on the bipolar and the log mode. And I started drawing this curve. And this gave uh, the distortion as you can hear in the video. Sounds cool. Now this is, I don't know why I use this. Maybe I use this just to uh, tame some frequency. This is it for the punch section. Now let's move for the body part. So for the body, I duplicated this track and added some more effects to it. I made some more tweaks and uh, I got this. Now I could have done this in this layer itself, but as I was making a tutorial for you guys, I thought of duplicating this layer and then adding the effects so that I could show you how I did this. All right, let, let us go through the plugins one by one. So first is one hala rule. Uh, I have automated the mix knob here. Uh, and then I have fab filter pro 2 3 the same the same patch which I had for the punch layer. Uh, I have added some more peaks here as you can see around 278 hertz and I have dipped at 598. Moving on, we have the same ISO. Oh, it's not the same ISO to trash. I have. Uh, uh, this is a bit different. I made some curves here. I still didn't use the uh, distortion types from this section. I simply went in and draw the curve, drew the curve. And then uh, we have Fab Filter Pro Q3 again, and I am boosting 840 hertz. I 
as you can hear there is a change in the character of the kick with this fab filter pro q3 added here and then i have this last distortion and it is the saturated from saturated from ableton live um i have put it on hard curve with base to minus 12 moving on i have fab filter pro q3 and this is actually taming certain frequencies all right so the na um the last layer that i created with this uh, layer is the sweep layer uh, which you can see here this one so i created this by adding overdrives and then recording that i resampled it mm, yes so this is it for the uh, preliminary steps to synthesize the punch and the body layers now let's move on to assembling it so here we are at our assembly line and as you can see the elements here you can see these two new members in the family uh, let me explain how the routing has been done so this is the final uh, group for the kick this is the punch group where only the punch sits and this is the master group and as you can see on the master uh, uh, group we have only fab filter pro q3 and standard clip so let's listen to the whole punch group as you can hear the punch seems quite different from what we actually first obtained so the difference is coming from the warping and the pitch envelope as you can see i am uh, i have this curve for transposing the pitch so now moving on to the second uh, layer for the punch we have this normal kick lastly we have this head one shot here and i have used this to increase the transient the clickiness in the punch now let me show you the effects uh, i have a normal eq here okay uh, this is important these notches what are these doing they are controlling the resonant frequencies which we actually got from uh, boosting this region while we were uh, trying to make our punch so this takes care of it and this threshold uh, this dynamic eq has been applied just to take care of that all right i'm moving on to the next layer uh, just minor eq um uh, i have added an over overdrive here to the add eq it all right uh, this is the body layer that we have and let's take a listen to this this is how it sounds on its own and uh, let me show you what effects i have here so uh, i have a normal eq and there is a boost around g sharp and a cut a dip around 1700 hertz and a low pass so this is the body part and this is the main body part and let me uh take you through the whole processing here so let's listen what it sounds with it and without it now without it so i got this layer directly by rendering um from this track and what i did after rendering it was i started <coughs> putting in these effects and found that it wasn't sounding as i wanted it to and then i went in then i warped it and uh increased the pitch by two semitones up and 
I use the, these markers to stretch it. So let me show you how it would sound without doing that. So minor changes there and uh, let's go directly to the effects here. Let me turn on Fab Filter Pro 2 3 first. So as you can see here, uh, there is a low cut at around 30 yards. I boosted this region because this was lacking and I reduced the, this 500 kilohertz, uh, 500 hertz region to reduce the boxiness which comes after distorting and minor boosts in the high frequency range. Moving on, I have this saturator from Ableton. And this is doing a boost at 7 dB. Uh, and I have put it on Wave Shaper mode. It is similar to uh, FL Studio's Wave Shaper. So I have played with these parameters here, a curve, depth, and linearity. Okay, uh, let's move forward. And here I have this disperser. Let's hear what it does. So now as you can see, uh, there is a dip at around 7.33 kilohertz. And likely so, it controls the high frequency range. Uh, you will hear a lot less harshness in the high frequency range. Uh, let me do the before and after once again. So as you can see, there is a bit more control on the top top end high high frequency range domain. All right, and then I have tantrum. And I have this at log. I have uh, changed the type to H and shifted the tone to H11 W. And uh, I have put the mix at 50%. And as you can hear from the audio, it is reducing the mid range. I can hear there is a dip in the mid range. And then I have standard clip. And you can see the clipping happening here in this range, uh, in this window here. All the red portion is getting clipped. Now moving on, I have utility. And this is just automating the volume for this layer. Moving on, this is the last layer and it's called the sweep. Let me show you how it sounds without this layer. It makes a good difference when we turn it on. So now let me take you through it. So first uh, is Berserk Distortion, which I added after uh, setting these parameters. Um, I was a bit unsatisfied with the result, therefore I added it after making these uh, the changes in these plugins. And then what I did was I tried shifting the sequence of this VST and when I got this at the front, I thought it sounds better. Therefore, it is the first VST which is in the chain. So I have put it on squashed mode, put the SD on and that's it. You can play with the density, order and disorder to make changes while you make your kicks. And uh, then again, I have played with the Wave Shaper in the Saturator uh, plugin from Ableton. As you can see, I have changed some of the parameters here. And there is a change in depth and the bass. I have also tried to change the frequency here. I can see that because it is usually set at around 1.2 kilohertz. Moving on, I have a compressor here. 
so it is just taming the amplitude and second last plugin is EQ8 and then at last I have utility uh, just to automate the volume of this channel so this is it for this video guys and in the coming next few videos we will try some more kicks from Vertai. If you would like to support me, you can buy my sample packs from my Gumroad store. Till then, bye bye, take care and happy producing.